Hello. Thought I'd pop back, maybe uh, bring some new information from the old, uh, the old book. I just thought I'd take a few minutes today just to sort of discuss a few points that I've come across that I think, I don't know, there's certain things I've learned over my life that are quite interesting, I suppose, well, they're probably not interesting, but um, I always used to have a few things that I, I, in my book I listed a few things that I thought would come up on a regular basis or a few tips that might help people, might not, um, i just like to take a few down, so um, what I used to is when I used to first meet people, I always used to tell them that the sky was blue because it was a reflection of the sea. Now, if they agreed with you, I'd probably walk away from that conversation. Other things I've learned was don't ever kick brown stones, especially if they look soft. Um, never rinse a spoon with the tap on full. Um, one thing I did learn when I was younger was to never leave your phone unattended in a pub after playing football. There were numerous occasions, not necessarily me, but others, where they had a Nokia. And what would happen is, if they walked away from it, to go for a waz or whatever, what they used to do was people used to tend to put them in their pint. Or they used to turn the language to Turkish. So when you came back, unless you had another Nokia there to follow the steps, you'd never be able to get the language back to English. Incredibly frustrating. And the other thing you people used to do was they always used to put vinegar in your pint. Nasty or some salt. That always used to happen. You know, I start, I, you know, I took my phone in the end. You know, always to down my pint before I used to go to the loo. It's just not right at all. One thing I did learn, my mate of mine was playing football once and he took a whack in the back early on in the game. So what he did was he came off and he put some deep heat on the bottom of his back. But then at half time, he was he wanted to get some hydration. So he downed a bottle of water, but then he tipped the rest of the bottle of water down his back and it ran down his spine. It picked up the deep heat at the base of his back and it ran it through to the back of his ball sack. And he spent the rest of the game running faster than I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Never seen anyone move so fast. I mean, the pain must have been excruciating, but what the water had done is just pick up the deep heat and push it around to the guys, you know, and it just burnt him throughout the game. Incredible scenes. Um, what I used to do as well was we used to go on do's and so on. And we used to go and do laser quest. Um, and it used to be like, you know, parents versus kids or whatever. And what used to make me laugh was it was always something to do with old people. Because what they used to do was they always used to run into the mirrors. <laughs> I always remember that. They never used to... Um, they never used to grasp the concept that actually there was mirrors in a quasar arena. So they used to think they were getting away. They used to run straight slap bang into a mirror. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, I remember once as well, I, I went, uh, one other thing I'd say is I'd never go paintballing with a hangover. I went paintballing on stag do once. And I woke up the next day and we got dragged out to this, it was early morning in the middle of nowhere. And we got dragged out and I was so uncomfortable. I was, shiv I was like shivering and shaking where I'd obviously had a few too many the night before um, and as we were having our induction the instructor continually said that we had to secure our weapons over our shoulders um, and I, was, I couldn't really grasp that concept I don't know why he wanted it over his shoulder <laughs> but as it as it happened I was absolutely shaking like a tumble dryer and as I went to secure my gun on my shoulder I released the, I, I, I clicked the trigger and I shot the instructor in the boot he took it well but he did say, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you secure your weapon. But I actually shot him in his boot because I was such a wreck. I was sh shaking like that and I, pff, and I pulled the trigger. And it, um, yeah, he just shot him straight in the foot. And I assume that's why you put him over your shoulder. Um, and the other thing that I come across a lot was, you know, when you were drunk, when you had one cigarette left, why was it you always lit the filter? You never lit the right end, did you? Or... If it is if you woke up and it was your last cigarette and you thought, oh yeah, that'll go down well. I don't smoke anymore, but when I did, it always used to happen. And if you had one last cigarette left and the shops were all closed, if you tried to light it, you always used to get that smell of rubber where you lit the filter and you'd lit it the wrong way around. That happened a lot. Um, yeah, strange one. I don't know, that always happens. It's just like sod's law, isn't it? 
Um, and then the other things I noticed was when I used to go to my nan's house in the winter, I'd always say to anyone, young or old, don't ever sit too close to your nan's electric fire. I remember countless days when I used to go and go round there on a cold day, even if it wasn't cold, the fire was on, I think. But I remember sitting there, and if you sat too close to the fire, it seemed to make you itch. It was really, I really remember the side of my head itching, scratching, and it's because it's one of those fires with the three panels, and you light them up. And if you used to, because obviously all the adults used to take the chairs, so as a kid, you used to have to sit on the floor, and you basically were next to the fire. And it, I just recall it making your face itch loads. It was really uncomfortable. I don't think it was safe either. It was probably a gas fire. Maybe it wasn't electric. Maybe it's one where you light the old gas with the match and then it catches and the old thing goes up. Don't know. But I used to make, used to make my face itch. It was so bad. Um, another thing I've noticed since having children is why is it that before you have children, if you put the lid on a bottle, whether it be sparkling water, Coke, whatever it is, if you notice you get it first time, you just when you're without children, you turn it on and it goes straight on the cap. But since I've had children, I've noticed every time I try and put a cap on a soft drink, I try and line it up and I spin it and it whizzes off and it always falls under the kitchen cupboard. And then when the children go away for a weekend, it never happens. I don't understand it. I suppose it's <clears throat> sod's law thing again, like the cigarette. It's just, I don't get it. It's so annoying. There's loads of things like that. It's like when you shut the fridge, when your kids are here, if you shut the fridge, it bounces open. When they're not here, it shuts. The mind boggles. What is the difference? Because it's still the same action, but why is it when the children are here, everything bounces back open? And it's things like, you know, when you try and throw something in the bin, when the kids are here, it's a flip-top bin, the flip-top will knock it straight back out again. When they're not here, it will drop straight in. Bizarre. Don't get it. Don't get it. Um, another good thing to do is ask Alexa to say 100 in Welsh comes back with a good result um, I'd never microwave cooked chicken tastes and smells like flatulence nasty um, I've come across situations where people have broken wind in butterfly houses heat does some strange things I'd never recommend anyone does that in a butterfly house they make you feel sick as it is because of the heat and for someone to do that in there, that's not great. That's not great. And I remember the stupid things you used to do when you're young. Why is it when you're young you throw a can of lit oil? I'm not saying I did it. But a lot of kids used to want to throw cans of links into open fires, didn't they? I suppose it was the bang. I suppose that was the, the I suppose, the, the attractiveness of doing it. The other thing as well, kids always used to throw disposable lighters on the floor, didn't they? Why is that? I suppose it's the bang effect again, isn't it? The kids just like things that go bang. It's a bit dangerous. It's a bit of a crap idea now, really, isn't it? It just leaves a big plastic mess on the floor. You still see them now. I still walk along the road and I still see plastic shards where someone's lobbed a lighter on the floor. It must still go on. It must still be an attractive pastime. There you go. Um, definitely on it as well is that if you ever get your toenail stuck in a sock, don't pull it up. That seems the little toe always seems to have a little bit of a a nail shard coming off it. And when you pull the sock, the sock grips it and tugs it, doesn't it? That's really painful. That's another thing that happens, I don't know why. That's really uncomfortable. I've seen that a lot. Especially when you play football. You put them sort of nylon y plasticky socks on. And then you, you, you yank them up and then it takes your nail with it. It's an absolute killer. I suppose it happens with gloves with hangnails, doesn't it? I suppose that happens as well. But a couple of new ones since the, the sort of pandemic's turned up. Is it, it's, have you noticed how your, how your beard always sticks out the bottom of your mask? It just looks a bit weird, doesn't it? They don't cover your beard. They haven't made one that covers a beard yet. And they also stick your beard. They the, the the sort of crappy fabric ones, they almost hook your beard, don't they? And you pull it out and it absolutely kills. It's just design flaw. I know they serve a purpose, but God, they smell awful as well, don't they? And one thing I haven't actually, which is quite funny, 
I suppose, detail is that if people buy the cheap fabric masks, they start looking like the Grinch, which I think is brilliant. If you see someone with a fabric mask, the one that loops over like that with the two ear holes, you'll tend to find that the, the front of the face looks like the Grinch. It, that's great. It's, it, I can't unsee it now. Every time I see people in fabric masks now, I just think I'm looking at the Grinch. It's outstanding. It's serious comedy. Um, and a lot of people like them. I mean, hopefully people won't have to wear them for long. So that, you know, that, that, that comical visual will go. But um, I think it's great, you know. If there's anything that it's taught me in the lockdown is that actually people in fabric masks do look like the Grinch. And I think, I think it's great. But one thing I did notice well in the, the lockdown was because I tended to grow my beard, I've cut it off now because it was annoying me, but because I tend to grow my beard, I've noticed that if you ever have butter, a couple of days later, and despite how many times you wash your beard, you can still smell butter. And that alone is a reason to take your beard off. I mean, butter, that's not great. A few days later, it's just smelling butter constantly. It's really not great. But I just thought I'd share a few things. I think if any more come up, <clears throat> I'll probably bring them up. But, yeah. The butter thing is just not great at all. But as I say, if you want to read anything, it's all in the book on Amazon. They still won't let me advertise it because they say it's profanity. I kind of get it. I suppose that, you know, this accidental picture looks a bit strange. Don't know. Anyway, cool. Later.